Hello, I'm Lisa Bontrager, and I would like to just review the setup of the French horn for you today. I've been, played in the PCO for many years. I teach horn at Penn State University, and this is kind of geared to younger students, but any older students um, should use this as a refresher because I've noticed a lot of embouchures get messed up as a student grows, especially through the torso then the placement gets off because the bell is often resting on our leg. So that distance changes. We wanna make sure and keep the mouthpiece placement and the angle of the lead pipe the same, even though our bodies might be changing or our chairs are changing or we're standing up. So those are all a lot of variables. Let's figure out what needs to be the same. The mouthpiece placement, this is the smallest mouthpiece of any of the brass family really small, so it's even more important that it is in the right spot. The right spot is two-thirds upper lip, one-third lower lip, as opposed to trumpet or most of the other brass, which are often half and half. So the way to get your mouthpiece high enough is to put the, your fingernail where your bottom lip begins or ends, right there, and place the mouthpiece above it. Now that is a nice high mouthpiece placement. You can't get it too high and still get a buzz. Don't worry about it being too high. It's not a problem. So you want some of the skin above your top lip in the mouthpiece. No skin below your bottom lip in the mouthpiece. So if you started on the trumpet, say, make sure that you change the placement of the mouthpiece. Very important. That's the most important thing. The next steps come after that, and that is the angle of the mouthpiece, which turns into the angle of the lead pipe, which is the first part of the horn that you put the mouthpiece into. But let's talk about this. Lips need to be even, so not under the bottom lip, under like the clarinet or the saxophone. They have to be even. And most of us have a natural overbite. Top teeth come um, in front of bottom teeth. Perfect for the horn. Sets right there. And you see the angle of my lead pipe or my mouthpiece. It's not straight at my face like it might be for the trumpet. So let me get my horn and put it on and you can see the angle of the lead pipe a little better. Here's the angle that's very common. <laughs> So the horn has a four octave range and the only way to really play that well is to have the right setup. So now if you have the right setup, let's talk about how to create the buzz in the right um, facial setup. One shortcut is to just say, mmm, mmm. What you'll see is this outer ring around my face, which includes my corners and my chin, are pulling back and are flat. Chin has to be flat. Mmm, mmm. What, what we need to add to that is this center part of the lips need to have like a drawstring pucker. Mmm. That's the combination we want. So kind of like Pennsylvania or um, Penn State. We've got nice and firm corners. This is the power of the embouchure, here to here. This V, that's the powerhouse right here, not here. So in order to take the pressure off right here, this is firm, strong, and then you have a little cushion. The cushion is also really important if you find yourself getting very fatigued quickly. Um, it's usually because there's not enough cushion or a thin sound. So make sure you've got both. So here's the outer circle, here's the inner circle. Now what is the opening or the aperture? How much do we want and what is the shape? We want the aperture to be kind of flat, not round like an O, flat and very small, kind of like the size of an oboe reed or a coffee stirrer. <clears throat> so check this out. My lips are even. I'm going to say Pennsylvania. 
and put the mouthpiece high. So I just added the buzz, which is just air blowing through both lips, which are vibrating. Like if you pull on a um, rubber band, it's gonna vibrate for a while. That's what we want to happen here. So let's see. I think um, the only thing I'd like to add to this is the angle of the lead pipe and, and how to hold the horn. It can be really challenging because people change sizes. So uh, I am the right size to sit in a, in a kind of average chair and rest the bell on my leg. Um, I was not, when I started the horn, I was a lot smaller and I actually rested this part of the bell on my leg and held out here. The thing that happens when you hold the bell out there instead of the proper hand position is that one will play sharp. So you have to pull out the main tuning slide to adjust for that. But if the hand is in the right place, the lead pipe is in the right place, then you might need to, based on the chair or the growth in the torso, hold the bell off your leg, which is also very common. I'm gonna make one more video and you can check it out and I'm gonna describe hand position and mutes. So the stop mute and the straight mute. So I hope that you um, are helped by this and reminded of a good setup. Thank you.